In the last few videos, we've been practicing finding and recognizing intervals one to seven on the piano, starting from any note when the shapes keep changing, but we've split the different sized intervals up into groups. Here, we're gonna mix them all together to make it a bit harder and really test you. If this is new, you're probably gonna to need to build up to this one with the other videos first, because I'm only gonna quickly recap how to find each one. Remember, this is a really useful thing to train because everything we play uses intervals. It's the spacing between the notes as we move around in a melody or as we're playing chords in different ways. And being comfortable with these shapes helps us learn more efficiently and play more fluently. So first of all, we're gonna practice finding these above a note that I say, and then we'll do it below and then I'm going to mix them together. So just to recap how that works, I'll say a note and then I'll say an interval and you have to find that above the note that I say. And then I'll give you the answer a few seconds later after you've had time to find it. Remember, if I'm going too slow or too fast, I can't find a speed that's gonna work for everyone, but you can change the playback speed on YouTube, remember. Um, it's in a different place on mobile and on desktop. Um, and you might, if you get stuck on one, you might want to have your finger ready on the pause button in case you get stuck so you can figure it out. I'll just very quickly recap um, my approach that I've been talking about in the last video is how to find all these intervals, a quick run through before we get going. So <clears throat> the first one was a minor second. So we'll do an example from C. A minor second is a half step away. A major second is a whole step away. A minor third is the next one, one and a half whole steps or three half steps. I think it's easy just to do the bigger leaps, one and a half. Um, and then a major third is two whole steps away. And then once we've got those major thirds down, which you should by now if you're doing this video, if not, go back and recap the other videos. Um, we can use the major third to reference the fourth. So we just go on a half step from the major third. So if you can do two, um, whole steps you can do two and a half to find the fourth. I'll come back to the tritone in a sec. The fifths, I think it's better to find these <clears throat> by getting a rough sense of the distance, how, that, how it looks and how it feels under your fingers. It's getting a bit too big to start counting. If you've been playing root position chords, you're kind of used to the distance of a fifth anyway because it's the outside notes in a major or a minor chord. So they're all matching colors, apart from a couple of exceptions I'll get to. So either white to white around this kind of distance, that feels too big, that feels too small, or they're black to black, um, that same kind of distance, but on black notes. Again, that feels too big, that feels too small, that feels just right. Uh, the two exceptions, watch out for B flat, going upwards um, is opposite colors, and B. So the two Bs, B and B flat, are opposite colors. Okay, so then the tritone, it's called a tritone, so you can um, hop three tones, three whole steps, one, two, three, or you can flatten the five. Even if it's called a sharp four or a tritone, wh whichever name it happens to be, um, we're not in any context in this, so that doesn't really apply, but you can still reference the visual of a fifth and shrink it. So when we do these going down, you reference a fifth and then you shrink it so it'll actually come up. But if you're going up, you'll reference a fifth and shrink it so it will come down. Um, okay, so let's move on to sixths. So sixths, once you can get the fifths comfortably, again, practice the separate video for that if you need to do that still. Um, the sixths, you can reference by going a half step on from a fifth for a minor sixth, a half step on, uh, sorry, a whole step on for a major sixth. So half step minor sixth, a whole step from a fifth for a major sixth. And then the sevenths, I prefer to reference an octave. An octave's easy to see. You shrink the gap by a half step for a minor seventh, sorry, a major seventh. You shrink the gap by a half step for a major seventh, and you shrink the gap by a whole step for a minor seventh. So from an octave of C, down half step, that's your major seventh, down a whole step, and that is your minor seventh. And do that from whatever note you're going from. And if you're doing it in reverse, you still shrink the gap. You shrink it by a half step for a major seventh, and you shrink it by a whole step for a minor seventh. Okay, so let's get going. We'll do about four minutes or so 
of finding intervals above. So I'll play a note and then tell you the interval. Okay, so a major third above F. You should have A, two whole steps. A major second above C sharp. You should have D sharp. It's a whole step. A minor seventh above E. Should have D. There's the octave, a whole step below. A major sixth above D. You should have B. So if you can find the fifth comfortably, it's a whole step beyond that. A minor third above G. Should have B flat. It's one and a half whole steps above. A major seventh above C. So you should have B. That is a half step below the octave. Shrunk by a half step. A major third above A flat. That is C. So one, two whole steps away. A minor second above E. Easier one, that's F. So half step right next door. Remember there's no black key between these. A perfect fifth above F sharp. So that's C sharp. So the feel, the distance of a fifth matching colors there. Perfect fifth above B flat. That's F, it's one of the fifths that's opposite colors along with from B as well. Um, a major second above E. It's a whole step above E, F sharp. A perfect fourth above F. Is B flat. So two and a half whole steps, or it's the fourth note, the F major scale. A perfect fifth above E flat. You should have B flat. A Minus sixth above A. Should have F. There's a fifth. There's a minus sixth. A flat five or a tritone above E. Should have B flat. So there's the reference the fifth. Shrink it by a half step for that one. A minor third above C sharp. That's E. One and a half whole steps away. Um, a flat five or a tritone above. G sharp. And that is D. You can reference the fifth, shrink it by a half step, or one, two, three tones, three whole steps. 
Tones and whole steps are the same thing. Um, a major third above B. That is D sharp, two whole steps away. A fourth, a perfect fourth above C sharp. F sharp, do one more. A minor seventh above F. Gives you E flat, whole step below the octave. Just quickly, if this video is helpful for you, then can you please click the like button because that's really helpful for the channel. And let me know in the comments how you get on with this. I do also have a PDF worksheet available from my website, which has a brief recap of all the theory stuff you need to know and a complete list of all the interval names. And lastly, over on my Patreon page, I'll be doing much longer extended versions of the videos in this series and other guided practice sessions to help you train. So we'll repeat the same thing again, but now we're finding all the intervals below the note that I say. So let's get going with A and a major second below. That should be G, a whole step down. Um, F sharp and a perfect fifth. Should have B, that is one of the opposite colored fifths. A perfect fourth below D flat. Should have A flat, one, two and a half whole steps away. Um, a minor third below B flat. Got G there. A minor second below D sharp. Then we've got D. Well, spelling wise, that would be E flat and D, but that's by the by. A major third below D. Should have B flat, two whole steps away, one, two. All right, a major sixth below B flat. Should have D flat. A major seventh below D sharp. E, a minor third below D flat. That is B flat, one and a half whole steps away. A minor sixth below C sharp. F, so C sharp or D flat, and F. Um, a major third below G. That is E flat. A major sixth below F. So that is going to be this note here, A flat, um, A minor third below G flat. Um, 
It's E flat. Whoops. A major sixth below D. It's F. A minor seventh below B. C sharp. So look at the octave, shrink the get by a whole step. A minor sixth below E flat. That is G. So it's like there's the fifth. Expanded on from that if you're doing it this way, sorry. There's the fifth. Half step past that is the minor sixth. Um, a major third below B flat. G flat. A major seventh below E. Should have F, and we'll do one more. A minor seventh below A flat. So you should have B flat. So there's the octave, shrink it by a whole step. So now we're gonna practice recognizing intervals that I'm playing. So I'm gonna turn the sound down for this so you can't hear the difference. Obviously, as I've said before, the sound of these intervals is one of the most important things we want to train. It's just not what we're doing here. So I want you to rely on your visual sense. Um, so I'm gonna play two notes together, and it could be any of those intervals, and you're gonna tell me what interval it is by eyeing up the gap between the notes. So we'll do another five minutes of that. Okay. That is a major sixth. Now I'm not gonna say the name of the notes here because I don't want you to figure out the interval by how many letters away it is. Like I say, we're focusing on the visual side. Okay, what's this? Whoops, that's it. That is a perfect fourth, two and a half whole steps away. That is a minor sixth. That would be a fifth, half step on from that. That is a flat five or a tritone or a sharp four. There's the fifth, shrunk by a half step. That is a major second, a whole step apart. That is a minor third, one and a half whole steps. So you'd see a minor third at the beginning of a minor chord, the root and the minor third. is a minor sixth, half step on from the fifth.
That is a major seventh, so it's just a half step below the octave. That is a minor seventh, or a flat seven, a whole step below an octave. That is a minor third. So remember, some of these white note thirds are major and some are wine minor. It depends how many other notes are in between them as to how big the gap really is, even though it looks the same if we're just looking at the white notes. Um, let's keep going. That is a major sixth. That would be a fifth that I want you to be able to recognize and then a whole step beyond that. So remember, we use these markers like the fifth to find the sixths and like the octave to find the sevenths. But eventually, with enough experience, you recognize them in their own right without the need for those markers. They're just uh, kind of, it's like having the stabilizers on for a bit before you take them off when you learn to ride a bike. Okay, let's keep going. That is a major second, a whole step apart. That is a tritone or a flat five or a sharp four. So it looks like the same distance of those other fourths, but it's not. There's actually more notes in between them because there's more black keys in between them. Okay, um, next one. That is a major third, two whole steps away. That's a major seventh. It's just a half step underneath an octave. That is a major sixth. If you imagine the fifth, that's one of the odd, odd uh, mismatched colors fifths. And then we go on a whole step from there. That is a minor second, it's a half step because there's no black key in between these two white keys. That is a fourth, one and a half, sorry, two and a half whole steps away. Okay, we'll do one more. And that is a minor seventh, a whole step below the octave. I hope that was helpful. Remember you can come back and watch these again anytime if you need a refresher, or you can check out the extended versions over on Patreon. Thanks for watching.